Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over the forward induction solution concept in a game I like to call the pub hunt. Now forward induction is a very powerful solution concept in extensive form games. It allows us to make uh, very specific predictions about what will happen in equilibrium. But unfortunately, it can also result in some pretty crazy outcomes which we might not actually believe are plausible. It's also the last thing I cover in chapter two of my textbook. So if you think that this is pretty interesting, I recommend you go check it out. And the links to that are in the video description. So let's get to this game. Now, it's called the Pub Hunt. Unsurprisingly, it's going to be based off of the Stag Hunt. If you'll remember back to when we covered the Stag Hunt, Stag Hunt was a simultaneous move game that, well, what happened? Player one and player two both choose whether to hunt a stag simultaneously, and based upon their choices, they get the payoffs that you see on your screen there. We can draw this out as an extensive form game. It's just like the strategic form game when we look at it in a matrix. Uh, it's just drawn out as a game tree. Regardless, when we're looking at the equilibria, we see that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, the stag-stag equilibrium and the rabbit-rabbit equilibrium, and then there's also a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where they randomize between stag and rabbit. Now in this video, I'm going to claim that merely by adding a strategy that is not played in equilibrium, we'll be able to narrow our solution from all sorts of, well, there's three different solutions. There's the stag stag solution, the rabbit rabbit solution, the mixed strategy solution. We'll be able to narrow our solution to a single unique equilibrium outcome. And we're gonna look at it with this game. And of course, we're using forward induction here. So in pub hunt, player one chooses whether to hunt a stag or a rabbit or go to the pub. If he goes to the pub, then player two will see him there and they'll sit down and enjoy 2.5 points of utility apiece. But if player one goes hunting for a stag or a rabbit, player two does not see the animal that player one chose. She merely observes that player one went hunting. And based off of that information, she then chooses whether to hunt a stag or a rabbit herself. Now getting to this idea of forward induction, when we're solving extensive form games, usually we're using backward induction. And when we're, do when we're doing that, we're assuming that all future play will be rational. So we start at the bottom of the game and work our way up. But when we're doing forward induction, we're sort of turning that on its head. Instead of assuming that all future play will be rational, well, we'll do that in some cases. But we'll also assume that all past play was rational. And that doesn't seem like it's too crazy of an assumption to make. And it won't be in the case of the pub hunt, I don't think. Your mileage may vary. But when we start looking at more complicated examples, such as a version of Battle of the Sexes or a version of Chicken, we'll start getting some crazier outcomes and stuff that you might not necessarily believe is true, despite the fact that we're predicating it on a seemingly reasonable assumption. So let's solve the pub hunt. Let's begin by assuming that player one does not choose to go to the pub. So player two has a chance to move. She doesn't actually observe whether player one is hunting a stag or a rabbit. All she sees is that player one is hunting something. Now, given that player two is in a bit of a dilemma, we know that if player one is hunting a stag, player two would rather hunt a stag since this three is greater than this two. But if player one is hunting a rabbit, she'll want to hunt a rabbit as well since this one is greater than this zero. So what player two does is completely dependent on what player one did. The dilemma is that player two doesn't actually observe this, and so she doesn't know whether player one's hunting a stag or hunting a rabbit, and so you know maybe there should be some uncertainty about what player two should do. But I'm actually going to claim that player two should be able to decipher or infer what player one is hunting purely based off of the fact that she is seeing player one hunt. And to do this, note what happens when player one hunts a rabbit. If player one hunts a rabbit, then if player two hunts a stag, he gets two. If she hunts a rabbit, he gets one. So at most, if player one hunts a rabbit, he'll get two. Compare that to his utility for going to the pub. Well, this 2.5 here is better than the best case scenario if player one hunts a rabbit. So 
it doesn't actually seem very reasonable for player one to hunt a rabbit. There's no case, there's no set of strategies, there's no situation that player one does better by hunting a rabbit than he does by going to the pub. So really he should never want to play rabbit, he should just play pub instead of rabbit if he were to ever play rabbit. But given that's the case, if player two sees player one hunting, she should be able to infer that player one is choosing stag. Because well, there's a reasonable outcome here. So if player two hunts a stag, player one gets three. If she hunts a rabbit, player one only gets zero. But nevertheless, player one could possibly get a higher utility here than his pub outcome by hunting a stag, predicated on the fact that player two would actually want to hunt a stag as well. So it's reasonable for player one to hunt a stag if uh, he doesn't go to the pub. It's not reasonable for him to hunt a rabbit if he doesn't go to the pub. So it should be, uh, player two should be able to infer purely on the fact that player one is hunting, that player one is hunting a stag, even though she doesn't actually see player one hunting a stag. She should nevertheless be able to infer he's not hunting a rabbit and he's therefore hunting a stag. And now given that, player two should want to hunt a stag as well because this three is greater than this two. So if she knows that player one is hunting a stag, she can choose a stag, get three, or choose a rabbit get two, three is greater than two, she'll want to hunt a stag. And so guess what? It's become reasonable here for player one to hunt a stag given that. So if player one hunts a stag, he knows player two will be able to infer he's hunting a stag and player two will hunt a stag as well. He'll get three and this three is going to be worth more than the 2.5 that he'll get for pub. And lo and behold, we have a unique solution here where player one hunts a stag, player two immediately infers that he's hunting a stag, and therefore player two hunts a stag as well. So essentially what we're doing in this case is applying a, a, a type of dominance. And it seems reasonable in this particular case, but when we start looking into more complicated examples, such as an old video I have on Battle of the Sexes, or a couple of examples I look at in the textbook at A Game of Chicken, we quickly come to unreasonable, or maybe unreasonable is a bit too strong of a word, but very strange solutions based off of what was a seemingly reasonable intuition, this idea of forward induction that all past play was rational. So I think this game is pretty neat. I hope you did too. You can, if you want to know more about forward induction, as I said, look at the video about Battle of the Sexes or go check out the textbook. Either way, I am done for now. I hope you enjoyed this and take care until I see you next time.